coming from inside of his progeny that that came true as well in one sense in in the coming of the prophet muhammad from that lineage um from the the children progeny of the prophet um ishmael okay but that's great thank you mustafa that is that was very informative i think that has answered my question quite Uh, quite well as well if i'm having the discussion with my colleague i'll be able to probably explain him uh, a little bit more in detail next time around looks like our technical difficulty has sort of um, you know <laughs> been been resolved so i will try and see if i'm able to just to play a video clip um, around life of holy prophet muhammad it's an introduction by the ahmadiyya muslim jamaat so bear with me i'll try and see if i can get this going एक रात मफासिद की वो तीरा उतारा जो नूर की हर मशल It was an era of darkness that had prevailed over the whole of Arabia. No one was safe or content, and people lived in a state of daily chaos. The Kaaba that Allah had once destined for his own worship was now filled with idols, almost one for each day of the year. Battles based on feuds between tribes resulted in years of slaughter. and innocent deaths to be born a woman was considered a sin every day you could hear the cries of baby girls buried alive because their entry into the world was considered a curse on the family even those who did survive were doomed for life forced into marriage to corrupt men they were denied all human rights even in widowhood they would be shunned by society gambling exploitation deceit dishonesty 
all were embedded in the everyday lives of Arabian society. At this time of darkness and gloom, when the poor, the slaves, and the needy would look up to the skies and cry out, Will no one come to help us? Allah had mercy on them and sent the one who would bring great change to mankind. And so begins the most remarkable chapter in human history. Somewhere in the household of the honorable family of Quraysh slept Amina, a bereft widow carrying the child of her late husband Abdullah. She was from the noble tribe of Banu Zohra and he was the son of Abdul Muttalib. Merchants by profession, Abdullah often had to travel to neighboring countries. On his return from a trip to Syria, he fell ill and died in Medina, leaving behind his newly married bride and unborn child. As she slept, Allah showed her an amazing dream, a dream not just concerning her future, but the future of mankind. In this dream, it was pitch dark, and suddenly a brilliant, bright light emerged from her bosom and spread all over the world. It was extremely significant, for it bore glad tidings for the whole of mankind. The pitch dark in her dream symbolized mankind that was bereft of spiritual light. Civilization that had spread its branches across the world now stood threatened for survival, for it was rotten to the core. The light that she saw, emerging from her bosom, was Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. I'll just pause there for a moment um, on the documentary and come back to an interesting um, question that's been uh, in my mind and I think it might be beneficial to our viewers as well, uh, Mustansa. We talk about prophecies. We talk about um, the Old Testament. We'll talk about the prophets, the lineage, uh, his life here and you know things he has done which you have uh, explained earlier. Was there anything significant or significant prophesied about the Holy Prophet Muhammad? In the Bible? In the Bible. 
from the, yeah. from Bible's perspective, yes. Uh, I mean, there's many prophecies about the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, uh, mentioned in the the Bible, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Um, some of the more commonly um, narrated ones are, for example, in Deuteronomy, um, which is one of the first five books of the Old Testament, known as the Torah, um, and it's in chapter 18 and roughly around verse 18 as well. It talks about. Um, the coming of the great prophet from amongst the the brothers of of those twelve tribes, um, and the brothers of those twelve tribes is from the lineage of um, the prophet Ishmael, um, uh, who, who was the brother of um, Isaac um, or Ishaq. Um, and it, I mean, the signs of his truth, which I mentioned, it says that you know he would speak the words of God. The, the very first words of the Holy Quran are Bismillah. Yes. Right. In the name of God, and he says, like, you know, he would speak in the name of God as well. Um, and um, there's there's other signs which are mentioned as well that everything you speak will be in the name of God and everything. And anyone who's a false claimant, they will be killed or they will die. The Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, he he wasn't killed. Um, he he lived a successful life, and after after um, his um, uh, claiming to be a prophet as well. But there's also other prophecies in the in the Bible. Um, uh, I, I, I know one in Songs of Solomon, yes. where it specifically mentions the name of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him as well. It says, um, and I, I don't know if my pronunciation is correct or not, but um, it's along the words of, and I'm saying it from the top of my head, that Hiko Mustaqim wa Kharu Muhammadin. The Daudi was Zeri Banut Yerushalam. The Muhammadin, yes. the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, his name has even been foretold. And that's in the Songs of Solomon, um, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Um, and there's, there's so much other details mentioned in prophecies. It, it talks about him coming with 10,000 saints, which is referring to um, the, the, the march back onto Mecca with ten, uh, an army of 10,000. And, um, and it talks about him coming with a fiery law. And fire um, in the Bible metaphorically also means a, a law which cleanses. Right. Um, and obviously a law meaning that he'll come with another teaching from God Almighty as well. There's so many different prophecies in the Bible um, which speak about the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Thank you, Mustansa. That's uh, very insightful uh, for our listeners and viewers. Um, so we'll go back to the documentary and uh, get more um, around the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad. the son she would give birth to, Muhammad, the Apostle of God, whose qualities and grand stature no one else in history would remotely match, and was destined to be the most powerful instrument of God for the revival of mankind. I have Shortly after her dream of light, Hazrat Amna gave birth to a baby boy. Hazrat Muttalib, the grandfather, was given the great news of the blessed birth, and the child was named Muhammad, which means immensely praised. To give thanks for the birth of his grandson, Hazrat Muttalib carried baby Muhammad around the Kaaba. And so, the Holy Prophet of Islam was born. From then on, Allah bestowed his benevolence on all those who touched his messenger. One of the first was his nurse Halima. As was customary, 
she was employed to care for the baby till he was about four years old. Coming from an impoverished background, her situation changed to one of great prosperity as she raised the baby prophet in his formative years. Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was subjected to trial from a very early age. When he was only six, his mother passed away, and then, after a few years, he lost his grandfather too. Alone again, he was put into the care of his uncle Abu Talib. He was a shy, quiet child who would be deeply affected by the poverty which he saw on his travels with his grandfather. He grew up into a man renowned for his kindness to relatives and his care for the poor and the needy. In Meccan society, he was known as Sadiq, the truthful, and Amin, the honest. His fair dealings made him well known amongst the trade community in particular. This is how Hazrat Khadija came to hear of him. Despite being 15 years his senior, she was so impressed. Muhammad believed in one God and was saddened by the idol worship which was rife in Mecca. He often retreated to a mountain cave called Hira where he could be alone with his Lord and sometimes several days would pass before he would return home. There he would engross himself in prayer and meditation and as a result he experienced many dreams. When he was 40 years old, an extraordinary incident took place in the cave. With the command of God, the angel Gabriel visited the prophet and said, Recite. Muhammad replied that he did not know how to recite. The angel insisted and at last made the prophet recite the following verses. 
recite thou in the name of thy Lord who created. Created man from a clot of blood, recite, and thy Lord is the most beneficent, who taught man by the pen, taught man what he knew not. This is the first revelation that the Prophet received. It has tremendous meaning. It commands him to proclaim the oneness of God, the creator of all men. When the Prophet received this revelation, he was full of fear of the responsibility which God had decided to place on his shoulders. Hurrying home, he narrated the incident to his wife Khadija, saying, Weak man that I am, how can I carry the responsibility which God proposes to put on my shoulders? Khadija replied, God is witness. He has not sent you this word that you should fail and prove unworthy and that he should then give you up? How can God do such a thing while you are kind and considerate to your relations? You help the poor and the forlorn and bear their burdens. You are restoring the virtues that had disappeared from our country. You treat guests with honor and help those who are in distress. Can you be subjected by God to any trial? This was the first of a long series of revelations spread over 23 years to descend on the master of all mankind, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. ایک رات مفاسد Thank you to our listeners and viewers. So we'll pause the um, documentary for today. Um, uh, do apologize, we had a bit of technical uh, glitch today. So uh, the program didn't go quite to plan, but we were able to cover a lot of uh, discussions around the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Hopefully in our next session, uh, we will go a little bit deeper into his life, some of his achievements, some of his um, uh, you know, advan advancements around uh, how to lead a you know, humble life, uh, a life that leads towards God. So there'll be more exciting discussions to follow in the next program. But just before we finish off, I just want to probably share some light again with regards to our refugee settlement in Masterton, some of the programs that's been running here. And uh, there's no better person to probably ask is Mustansa. And whatever I do get insights on, I do always let the listeners and our viewers know. And um, our special thanks to the team at Red Cross, uh, Masterton District Council, the Mayor, um, Aero FM, very, very thankful we're able to voice our, um, you know, uh, happiness i guess uh, around what what you have done for us through this channel so i'll probably just get mustansa to give us uh, some more on the insight on the settlement yeah um the uh, i think the, the i just a few days ago i attended an event in in wellington um and it was organized by the baha'is um and it spoke about the baha'i persecution that they are facing yes. um in particular in iran um and that targeted persecution and it was very you know um, saddening to see what was happening with them and what's the documentary which um, was played as well and there was quite a large audience there as well but in one sense i was happy that they had an mp they had some good representatives who were there to to make the public aware um of what's going on and and raise their issues um and in one sense, it drew me to to that desire to raise the voice of what's happening with us Ahmadis as well. Because we have the same thing going on. And recently, just very recently, four students were thrown out of school in Pakistan. Why? Merely because they're Ahmadis. They did nothing wrong just because of the beliefs they hold. They were thrown out of school. And even more recently... There's the clerics 
have called on supporters to carry out attacks against Ahmadis, especially pregnant mothers. Just imagine that. You, I mean, we, we hear of the accounts of Pharaoh um, and how when, when young children were born, he would you know, in, um, get the wet nurses or he'd get them killed and stuff. Um, but this is unborn children attacking pregnant mothers and unborn children. And um, I, I'll read out parts of the press release that uh, Muhammad named Jatta Qadri, a senior cleric belonging to the Tariq e Labek Pakistan, calls on his supporters to carry out attacks against pregnant Ahmadi Muslim mothers to ensure, and, and quote, ensure that no new Ahmadis are born. And he went on to say, and I quote, those babies who are being born should be killed. And then throughout the speech, the cleric led various slogans, including there is but only one punishment for blasphemers, decapitation. And then speaking from the podium, the cleric openly warned the police administration um, that they should, uh, should they attempt to provide protection to Ahmadi Muslims um, and their families. He said that those of you who are from the police agencies or if there is any DPO or district police officer um, or DC or deputy commissioner um, or SHO or police station house officer, they must understand that we cannot be stopped. Just imagine that. Imagine if something like that happened here, that the outcry that people would have. And this is, this is not something that's unique in that this is just one, one event. There's so much targeted persecution of our community that's happening in Pakistan on a daily basis. And this publicly, they're calling for the death of our members. Why? Just merely because of our beliefs, our peaceful beliefs. Mm. It's not like our beliefs are threatening anyone in any way. They're peaceful beliefs. And, and, and that's the situation mm. that our members are coming from. Yep. And that's the situation that we need to raise our voice about. And anyone who's hearing this as well, I urge you to raise your voice about the, these issues as well. Absolutely, Mustansar. This is um, inhumane, against human rights, unlawful. Look, and I'm glad you've highlighted this to our listeners and viewers. And it fit, fits in so nicely. This is why our members or the members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community are leaving Pakistan on refugees to settle where they can find peace. And New Zealand is one country who is welcoming us so, uh, you know, in, in such a blessed way, I guess is the right word to say here, that uh, they can be away from this mess. Mm. So, but uh, I'd reiterate that yeah. no one wants to leave their home country. Mm. They, have, they have an attachment, they have a love for yes. their home country, they've got family, they've got loved ones, they've got memories there. But they're being forced to leave. And so what can we do about it is something that we need to think about. Whilst people volunteer, help out the refugees as well, let's try and stop that, that, that persecution. Let's raise our voices against it. That's the very least we can do. And, and as a country, as a nation, uh, uh, we, should, we should be raising our voices against such brutalities, um, against all minorities, not, not just Ahmadis, Zug, Baha'is and others, but all minorities and raising our voice against injustice. And by, by creating that pressure, by creating that environment of we will not tolerate this, we can change the world, we can bring about a revolution, we can bring about peace and, and stop the need for people to run away from their homes, leave everything and leave in such dire circumstances. And, and I think that's something that no one wants to do, but they're forced to do. Mm. And, and hopefully we can, we, we, whilst we're living in these privileged situations that we are in, Yes. So we don't feel any kind of threat on our daily life, uh, in our daily lives. We can ha hopefully have a positive impact on those who do, through our voices, through through that those opportunities that we've been given. Yes. Now, thank you, Mustansa, for uh, giving uh, such a, a valuable information to our listeners and viewers. Please, if you're listening to our program, seeing our program today, uh, reach out to us on 0800 Y Islam info at ahmadiyya.org.nz. I'm actually um, almost inclined to give you my personal number. Uh, please, um, yeah, it's 0275365654. Um, please call us um, if you need to um, raise our voice further around this persecution that our uh, community is currently facing in Pakistan. Again, it's injustice, uh, inhumane, 
totally against the human rights. Um, we want to hear from our, our listeners and viewers how we can take this further and stop this um, injustice. Uh, thank you once again to our vis uh, listeners and viewers. Um, again, do apologize for our bit of a, a technical um, glitch this morning, but hopefully next week we'll bring more insight to our We Are One program. Kia ora and uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.